currently in a deep crisis, yes, but it is not a crisis, a debt crisis. It is much more a crisis of market institutions. It is a crisis of legitimacy of the current economic system. I think this is very, very important to be aware of. And um, it is very important to be aware of that the framing it as a debt crisis is framing it in a way to, um, to legitimize the economic policies that have failed, the neoliberal economic policies. This is a way to weaken the state, to weaken our common institutions. Phrasing, framing it as a debt crisis means uh, putting the cost to all of us all of us citizens, men and women, means legitimizing to lower social expenditures, legitimize to uh, weaken the state, dismantle the state, privatize. In short, um, it's a legitimization to continue the economic policies of the last decades, which clearly failed. So what I am saying is, we are not in a uh, in a debt crisis, but of course, yes, we are in a situation of multiple crises. What we need, and this is very important for all and each single person of us, we need to talk about what the real issues are. We are in a deep social crisis. We are in an employment crisis. We are in a crisis uh, of uh, people suffering. We do have a large um, deviation of, um, or a bracket between higher incomes and lower incomes. And we do have a situation um, where we need to make sure to turn completely. So what is the way? Um, the European answer is uh, the so-called economic governance package. What is it? It is a package of legislative texts negotiated in secret, which should make sure to, uh, to continue neoliberal economic policies and even reinforce them. It is very, very, very important to know about economic, uh, the economic governance issue, because what is it? The European Union is deciding and it will decide mid of September on uh, legislation that will for the next decades put uh, states under pressure of cutting public expenditures, cutting public expenditures and cutting public expenditures again, again, again. And if this will not be done, and I'm not exaggerating, there is financial fines. So if states do not comply with economic pay, uh, policies, which are basically cutting expenditure and dismantling our economic and social rights, they would have to pay fines up to 0.5% of GDP, which is billions of euros. Uh, and uh, the second part of the economic governance package is a package of macroeconomic surveillance, how it is called. But what is the content of this surveillance? Uh, the idea is that the bureaucracy, the European bureaucracy, European Commission, together with finance ministries, will uh, watch out the type of economic policies and will decide whether member states, Spain, Austria, whoever, is doing good economic policies or is in an imbalance. But what are they judging as an imbalance? An imbalance is not if there is an increasing gap between rich and poor. No, it's not whether there is increasing unemployment for the Commission. That's not the imbalance. The imbalance will be whether wages are too high, the current account deficit, whether um, the debt is too high. So as we know what the plans are, we have to fight this type of European economic policies. Because 
it will lead us into decades of stagnation and decades of deterioration of the social situation and of the situation of people in our countries. So, what is the alternatives? Where should we go? I think, I am, uh, I think it's very, very important to act together at the European level, but find different answers, not the current day political answers. Um, there is different dimensions to it. One is democratization. The European Union is a dictatorship of bureaucracy, um, even though, of course, there is the European Parliament, but the way how the, the policies are going and are guided, it's in economic policy terms, there will be less to say for the European Parliament. So it's a question of democracy. We have to regain and say Europe is the people and not how it is today. Europe is bureaucracy and Europe is the big business who has a say on it. So this is one strong, strong, strong challenge. But on the other hand, we have to change economic policies. At the European level, we have a chance to regain room for maneuver for national state policies. For example, if we agree at the European level to harmonize taxes or at least to harmonize the basis of taxation, for example in terms of business taxes, we would regain a lot. Because at the moment the European Union is constructed in a way that it's tax competition. If we do harmonize taxes, we can uh, harmonize taxes to the upper level we can regain competences and set European level tax rates to make sure that business pay their fair share on, uh, to the income of states. That's one part. The other part where we can do a lot in terms of taxation is uh, levy a financial transaction tax at the European level which is not only additional income to finance development policies, employment policies, social policies, etc., but which will be an important element to regain the power over markets. I'm not saying that financial, uh, tax, uh, financial transaction tax is the panacea, is the best for everything, but it will help us to reduce the heavy speculative attacks that are happening at the moment. As a movement, we need to address the question of how far capital markets serve their, uh, their purpose. There is such a strong uh, belief and ideology of markets, belief in markets, market ideology, and we are the ones who really need to work hard to break this ideology. I even would suggest that we should think about whether the stock exchange is an appropriate institution. I do think that uh, it actually brings more harm to the economy than uh, a good thing. So I, I do think we should, uh, should talk about abolishing the stock exchange. We should think about delegitimizing delegitima markets. Markets are dictating their interests of maximizing profits on all of us. We have to face it. We are now in a situation of strengthened market dictatorship. Week by week, even day by day, financial markets are taking over the role of political decision makers. It's not only the example of the last month and years for European states where markets have been dictating what type of economic policies and decisions should be made. We have the latest example in uh, the United States where state bonds have been downgraded and rating agencies have very explicitly spelled out that social policy <coughs> expenditure should be cut. 
So in what situation are we? We need to realize that markets are taking over very essential democratic functions and that's where we need to come in and stop it.